Hi. So I don't know how to intro this video, but um, I have an idea. So there's a lot of FNAF fan games out there. I don't know how to make video games. Like, that's just way too complex for me. But I have an idea of how I could turn my house into a FNAF fan game. I spent the last, like, 30 minutes talking a lot to myself, running around my house, like, okay, so this is where this guy would go. This is how this would work. This is how the power system works. This is how all this shit works. The idea is, by the hopefully by the 1% chance that someone who actually knows how to make a FNAF fan game sees this, the hope is that they'll like the idea and make it. You can credit me if you want, I don't care. But I just want to go over it. So this is going to be a long video. I doubt I'm going to really edit this much at all. But I've had this idea before, and, it, and then I always just forget about it. But I've had the idea come back to me, and I just want to at least record myself talking about it just so I can keep it in my mind. Because maybe one day I'll learn how to make video games and be able to do it myself and make the fan game, and that'd be cool. Probably not. But, you know, maybe. Oh, cat. Okay, kitchen. All right, for starters, this is my kitchen. This would be like the office area, right? This is the whole thing. All right, so... I think we could have like maybe six minute nights and this will be the microwave can like kind of, you know, count the time from 12 to six. Here in the middle, we can have like, I mean, I just have my iPad here. You can do like an actual computer, but you know, you can like sit down and, you know, have your cameras or something. Okay, let's talk about doors. My idea is like, hey, doors aren't going to take any power. And I'll explain how that works in a minute. But like here you have your doors. These are just sliding doors. So you can just slide them. Right, so that's that's the thought. Like, oh hey, you know, let me run up. Oh hey, there's a dude here. And you just slide it open and close. So we have door one, door two, come all the way over here. We have door three. We also have basement door. I guess we can call that door four if we want. I still don't have ideas for the basement, but I've gotten the uh, main doors down pretty good. So, this will kind of be like free roam, I guess. You don't need to jump, so we don't really need to worry about like, you know, oh, let's jump up on the stool onto the counter and now they can't kill me or something, right? We don't need to worry about that. But I have a cool idea for a mechanic for one of them because obviously there'll be like an invisible barrier here at the door. You're fine. We'll have like an invisible barrier at the doors or something. But when you get to this door specifically, you have a prompt to walk out there and it'll just do like an animation running out here and you'll be in the living room. And then you're not able to move except looking around, and then you get the prompt to go back. So the idea is Bonnie and Foxy will be in here, and we could do kind of any characters. I just thought, hey, main four, right? We'll at least get that as a starting point. <coughs> I'm talking a lot, I'm running out of breath. But we'll have Bonnie and Foxy in here, and the way Bonnie works is on the cameras, we'll have like a camera up there shining down on the stage over there or something. But hey, Bonnie is just standing on the stage looking downward, Right, so let me set myself up here. Hopefully you can see me good. But like the idea is, hey, Bonnie's here with his guitar in stage zero or whatever. Stage one, he's looking up. Stage two, he's got his guitar down or something and he's look, like looking straight up. And then like maybe like stage three is he doesn't have his guitar. He's at the edge of the stage, like he's ready to move. And then he runs to the office and he'll run over here to this door, specifically this door because it connects to it and he'll come in and kill you. And the way you stop him is either by running out here and flashing the light on him, or if you don't do that in time, he'll run to the door. Now, the thing is the doors aren't gonna have power, at least that's I think that would be a cooler way to do it. There will still be a power system. The thing is, you shut the door, but the thing is when you close the doors, there's still gonna be this little space because you know it's easier to get your hand in there to open and close, right, whatever. But the thing is, Bonnie, and he'll probably be the only one to do this, he'll actually put his hand in there and start opening this slowly. And if it gets like, I don't know, half to two-thirds open, he just comes out and kills you, right? Now, the counter to that would be, he's going, he has his hand in here like this, trying to open it. So you could put your hands up against it like this, and he'll just sit there for a couple seconds doing that, and then he'll be like, man, this isn't really working. I'm going to go back to stage, and then you can just open it. And that's pretty much how Bonnie works, right? That's the idea. Now, we also, out here on this stage here, would be Foxy. And the way he's going to work is he's going to do 
basically nothing unless, and now this is where it comes in with having no power for the doors. Hey, oh, you know, there's an animatronic here. Let's shut the door so they don't get in. Oh, there's no power. Why don't I just shut all the doors and be fine? Well, the thing is, the way Foxy is, the way Foxy is gonna work is he's gonna always have like a timer or whatever going. Hey, all the doors, you know, he's gonna be checking all the doors. And it's like, hey, this door has been shut for this amount of time while no animatronic is there. Most likely the player is, then that means the player is probably trying to just shut all the doors and be like, oh yeah, now I'm safe. So then what Foxy's gonna do is he's gonna run out of that stage there and he's going to go to that door one, two, or three and attack the door. And since they're wooden doors, he's just going to break it. Now, he will not kill you, but he will break the door. So if someone goes there, you're screwed. So basically, don't shut the doors unless someone's there. And it will be a generous timer. So it's not like, oh, hey, I got to do all this stuff on like night five. Oh, I forgot to open that one door after like two seconds of the dude leaving. Now Foxy broke the door and I'm screwed. No, you'll have a generous timer. Maybe, like, shorten it a little bit as it goes on or something. I don't know. But basically, that's how Foxy would work. Now, what happens if you open the door while he's charging? Well, he's just going to come in and kill you, obviously. So basically, just don't try to cheese it and just have all the doors shut. And Foxy will literally do nothing. Maybe don't have him active on night one or something. You know, really just let the player get to learn how things work or something. I don't know. Now... I'm thinking like Freddy. I'm thinking back to FNAF 1 with Freddy, right? How would Freddy work? Well, we want something unique for these guys. So I've noticed that there's actually like light switches by each of the doors. Uh, there's one there. Each of the doors in my kitchen. So maybe the idea is, and now again, thinking back to FNAF 1, the phone guy specifically says that Freddy becomes more active in the dark. So maybe we could have Freddy be able to go to any door because Bonnie and F Bonnie's only going to go to this door. But Freddy, he can go to any door, right? Any of the first three doors. And the way he's works, he's just gonna right, sorry, that's that's completely wrong. Sorry, that's that's for a different that's for Chica, isn't it? Um, but Freddy, you shut the door, it's not gonna do anything. He's just gonna pound on the door or like open it or whatever. He won't break the doors, but he will open them. The way you get rid of them is boom. Boom, turn on the light. And he's gonna be like, ah, oh, my eyes, oh whatever, and then leave and go back to his stage. Now, the way the power system works is lights, having the lights on will use power. You run out of power, it's not like, oh, hey, I'm dead now, like in FNAF 1. But that means you can't really get rid of Freddy. Now, it won't be like that dark in the office without lights on or whatever, but, you know, this is going to make it really bright, at least by that area of, like, whatever door you're at. But I think that'll be kind of interesting. I think that's a good way to maybe get rid of Freddy, right? So then we also have Chica. Chica, the thing is right now we have Foxy. Foxy, the way he works is it's like, oh, hey, you're keeping your door shut when no one's there for a super long amount of time, right? So now he's going to come break your door and kill you or whatever. Well, Bonnie just comes to this door and the whole time you have to be there with him, dealing with him until he leaves. Freddy, you don't have to shut the door at all. You just got to get to him, flick the lights on real quick, and then he leaves. So we don't really have anyone who's just coming there and sitting at the door. So we could have Chica just simply walk around, choose a door to go to, and stand there. You don't get there in time, you die. You do get there in time, go ahead and shut that door. Maybe after a little while you hear, like, uh, footsteps or whatever of her walking away. Open the door, you're good to go. P pretty basic. Now, the thing is, it's going to get kind of weird if, you know, the whole thing is, like, Bonnie comes to the door, and you both are kind of, like, you know, playing tug-of-war with the door. That's going to be kind of weird. Okay, my friend called me, so uh, I had to stop the video and do another video, but we're good. Um, so I left off at the point of like, hey, Bonnie comes to the door, and you guys are just sitting here playing tug-of-war with the door so that, you know, he's trying to kill you, you're trying not to die. You guys are playing tug-of-war for like 10, 15 seconds. Well, it's going to be kind of weird if Freddy or Chica is also just at the door. So I think we should make it like Freddy can still come to this door, but if Bonnie is like about to come to the door or is like on his way to the door at the door whatever Freddy then only can only go to like door two or three right and Chica just can't come here at all because I don't think it would be very fun to code or whatever <laughs> two dudes to also like sometimes not come here or whatever so I think that would make more sense uh, in that regard so that's the main four you don't have to use the main four but they're the first thing that came to mind 
because, well, it's, you know, first FNAF game, right? We're making a FNAF fan game here. I mean, when you say Five Nights at Freddy's, a lot of people are probably going to think of, like, the first game or first couple of games. So, you know. Also, Basement. I'm still f coming up with an idea for that. So now let's talk about power. The doors don't use power, but we have Foxy to make it so you can't just shut the doors and not worry about anyone coming from the doors, right? Power. Now, in... A lot of the FNAF games, if not all of them, where you have a power system that powers the entire building or whatever, usually there's, like, something that'll slowly, very slowly drain the power. I know in FNAF 1 it's crazy, because I think it's, like, 9% an hour that you lose, or, like, 9.5, not quite 10%, but it's basically 10% an hour that you lose. I mean, you only have 40% to play with. Like, shut the doors and, you know, keep them out with, which is kind of insane, especially with Bonnie just sitting there half the time for hours. So I think our source of power is just this. This is our source of power that is just slowly draining the power. Now the power only works for the lights. I mean, we could think of some, I, I need to think of something else because that's not very good. But this will slowly drain, maybe take like 10% uh, throughout the whole night because we don't want it to be crazy. But the thing is you can turn this on and off if you want, but then you can't see the time. And uh, once it hits 6 a.m., you don't just win. The idea is like, oh, beep, beep, beep. You know, it's like, oh, hey, the night's over. And then all the animatronics will despawn, but you still got to run over here to the door. And then you get out. Just like play a sound effect of you leaving, I guess. I don't know. But I feel like maybe they shouldn't despawn. You can like go past 6 a.m. if you don't turn this back on. That'd be kind of funny. Because otherwise you just have it off and eventually be like, hey, oh, yeah, it's 6 a.m. Let's go. Or be like, oh, hey, the animatronics have despawned. So maybe you can go past 6 a.m. And you will never know if it's 6 a.m. or past 6 a.m. until you turn that back on or something. I don't know. It being the kitchen, you could keep this area kitchen themed or completely change it up. But maybe keep the layout roughly the same. But, like, if it is a kitchen, it makes sense for this to still be a microwave for your timer. I don't know. Something like that. But then obviously lights for Freddy. You need the lights for Freddy. And you can just leave the lights on. It'll make it a lot easier to see in these areas. Not that it'll be that hard to see without them. But, you know, you can see better with them, obviously. Light helps you see. But if you just but you don't want to just leave it on. Not that you would really need to unless Freddy's at the door. Which you don't have to leave it on for that long, right? Okay. Basement door. This is going to be your oddball. Obviously, won't be here on night one. Probably not even night two. But the way the basement door works is I think it should always be kind of open. Maybe it's like, oh, yeah, you're here and you can hold it shut if you need to. But then when you're not holding it, it'll, like, you know, slowly open back up just a little bit. But, like, you know, the whole thing is, like, hey, you walk up to it and you can peek in. And, hey, you know, someone's going to be there. And then if someone's there, you just shut it and hold it shut. You have to stay here and hold it shut. Otherwise, like, oh, you get off it. It's just going to, like, open on its own a little bit. But, like, maybe... I don't know what animatronic we put down here. Maybe, like, a sister location animatronic. I feel like that would fit the theme of the basement. Obviously, you don't have the lights here. The whole idea is, like, hey, you have your flashlight. You could have multiple down here. Maybe one that's, like, hey, you want a flashlight? That guy, when they're getting on the stairs, and they'll go away. And then the other one, it's like, oh, hey, you can flashlight them, but it's not going to get rid of them. You're just flashlighting to see how close they are. And if they get, like, really close by here, you just shut the door then for, like, however long until you hear footsteps or whatever. And then you can open it back up. Something like that, I think, would be an interesting idea. We could put more than two down there if we want. Or just keep it as two. Either or. But I think it would add something interesting, a little more of a challenge during the later nights. And I don't want this to be, like, a really difficult game. Maybe keep it roughly medium. Maybe level five can be a, more of, like, a hard difficulty. Because I want casuals to be able to, like, play it and still beat it. Maybe, you know, still have a challenge. But for the people who want more of a challenge, we could do, like, a night six or seven or, like, custom night or something like that. Because <coughs> I know that's, a, like, a lot of people like a challenge. And a lot of people like a, you know, more medium difficulty style so that they can actually beat it. Which, me, personally, I'd fit under that second category. I'm not that great at games. And I know I struggle with, like, a few of the earlier FNAF games, or I guess older. I don't know. Like, within the first six, I'd probably, I mean, FNAF 2 is just hard. Don't get me started on Sister Location and how I just can't, especially with Night 4. 
And I think it got nerfed as well, like, soon after it originally came out. But, you know, we'd have, like, extra stuff after you beat the first five nights or whatever for people who want more of a challenge. So we talked about the power system a little bit. Oh, yeah, cameras obviously would use power. We can also talk about cameras. Where are the cameras going to be? What are they going to do? Cameras aren't going to do anything except let you see. <clears throat> like, you know, obviously we could put a camera out here. Because, like, assuming this is where the main stage with Bonnie and Foxy would go. You can see Foxy here just fine. But also, like, you could see Bonnie to see what stage he's in. So, you know, if you need to flashlight him or shut him out from the door or whatever. So, you can just put, like, the camera up there or whatever. So, you can see down on that. I think we would benefit from, like, a camera... Let me turn on the light. So I think we benefit from a camera like right here. Because then you could see down this hall. And then you could see, hey, someone's going to the store at the store. Make it so you can like turn it so you can see like, hey, that stuff's going on there or something. And that would be door one and two, right? And then in here. Hello, cat. How are you doing? In here, we can put like a camera right there on the ceiling. So you can like see that doorway to see if someone's in here coming through here to door three. I think that would be nice as well. Now, how would we do like a custom night or not custom night, like extra nights, like night six and seven? I feel like we could do something where we just get rid of all the dudes we currently have and then add like one or two new guys that have their own unique mechanics or something. The first thing that comes to my mind with FNAF when I say that is like, Nightmare Fredbear and Nightmare from FNAF 4. Because so I know they work quite differently compared to everybody else. I'm pretty sure... I don't know if there's a night where it's just them. I know, like, there's nights where it's like, oh, after 3 a.m. I think once it hits 4 a.m. it switches to Fredbear or Nightmare or whatever. Is there also a night where you just go six hours of just them? I think there is. A little bit of both. I don't know. But they're the first things that come to mind because they work differently. So how would said animatronic work differently and how would you defend against that i mean they'd probably be quite fast i would assume that would make sense because you know it's supposed to be more challenging like this is the stuff where it's not meant to be anywhere near easy or even medium difficulty this is supposed to be hard or very hard difficulty kind of stuff so i'm thinking they could maybe like fake you out or something and then if you get faked out by them, you die. And if you avoid getting faked out and do what you're actually supposed to do, you live, you know, something like that. Ooh, we could have, like, maybe it's kind of like the FNAF 3 hallucination thing where it's like, hey, that you see him there and there. There's a way to tell which one is real and which one's not real. And if you shut the door on the fake one, you die. You shut the door on the real one, you're good to go. And you'll get, like, a audio cue for, like, hey, that was the right one, and now they're gone. And, and stuff like that. I feel like we should talk about audio cues as well. Uh, back to the main four. I mean, Foxy, you're probably not going to see him a whole lot. But if you do manage to piss him off and he comes to your door, obviously you'll hear his really fast footsteps. So just, and then, boom, hitting your door. I feel like Freddy, each time he's like, and whenever he's at a door, he should laugh. If you want, you could do directional audio so you have a decent idea of where he is. So like, oh, hey, I'm right here. Oh, he laughed. I heard him to the left. Oh, yeah, there he is. Let me go turn on the light. Nope. Goodbye, Freddy. Or, you know, hey, I heard him on my right. He's got to be over here at door one or two, right? I mean, I feel like we don't need different footstep audio for Chica and Bonnie. I feel like it's fairly obvious if Bonnie's on the move or not. Because more likely than not, you're going to him instead of him coming to you. Because, you know, that's the mechanic where you run out here. Shine with your light, he goes back to his original position, and you run back in. And I'm going to reiterate that you cannot leave the office except for going to Bonnie, where it's just a prompt, and you're forced into an animation where you run out here. Can't move at all except for looking around. Shine him with your light, look back, hit the prompt, and you're good to go back in. Or something like that. You should also talk about stamina. I feel like stamina should be a thing. Like, you can walk, or you can use your stamina to run. 
And obviously, you know, you'll eventually run out of stamina if you run for too long. But while you're not running, it'll recharge. I mean, pretty basic stamina stuff. I feel like if we wanted, if we, if you wanted to, you could also make it so like on the later nights you have less stamina or it goes down faster or something. <coughs> I don't know, something like that would probably be interesting. I don't know, you can do whatever you want with the stamina. Also, I just took a quick break just to sit down for like 30 seconds because, you know, walking slash jogging around while rapidly talking, barely giving myself a chance to breathe. You know, I needed to take a quick, just 30 seconds to sit down. So, you know, do whatever you want with the stamina, I guess. I feel like it'd be kind of interesting if there's also like a multiplayer mod or like a two-player mod so you can have two people. I feel like that'd be quite interesting. And maybe just make every all the animatronics a little more aggressive, not too crazy. Or maybe you could like alter their difficulty if you wanted to even. Kind of like a custom night. And with the custom night, if you, I feel like it'd be kind of cool to obviously adjust the main four, the two basement dudes, or one, maybe three. I feel like it's a good idea for basement dudes. I feel like system location animatronics would fit this vibe of the dark basement the best. Do what you want. Do what you want, though. But I feel like it'd be kind of, I feel like a really good way to go about it so that there's not too much going on, but still enough going on is like have one dude that ignores your flashlight and just walks up to the door. You shut the door, you gotta hold it shut while they're there. You hear them walk away, you're good. The other one, you see them, you flash them, and they run away. I feel like that's a pretty good way to go about it. And obviously the only light you can use in the basement is your flashlight. And you're not able to go down there, obviously. And uh, yeah, back to the two person. Like if we do, like if you do a multiplayer version or whatever, I feel like this wouldn't be fun with more than two people. I feel like more than two people, I mean, you could just have one person sit here, deal with this stuff here, one person at each door there. Maybe like one person for those two doors, one person for those two doors, one person on camera's be like, hey, so and so has moved here. Like, hey, Bonnie's, you know, moving. Guy at door one and two, go out there and flash him. Oh, hey, Freddy's coming to door three. Door three guy, you know, get ready on the light or something. You know, that wouldn't be fun. But with two people, it'd be like, hey, we can just sit here and here and kind of watch stuff, I guess. But you also would still need to go back to camps and know if Bonnie's... I mean, I don't know. I feel like you could kind of cheese it. We'd have to probably find a way around that. But I think a two-player thing would be pretty cool if we wanted to do that. Also, I think we could do, like, a cool animation with the doors of just, like... I know, it's kind of hard to, like, show it, like, give you the feel of it. Kind of have to have more of a first-person view to understand what I'm, the way I'm doing it. But kind of have, like, your head move with the door, so it's not just, like... It's more like you're... kind of moving around with it I think it would be kind of cool and then perhaps for like the basement door instead of just like it's more like kind of like this like where you're peeking into the basement instead of just like being here standing here you're like peeking into it as you're opening the door and then peeking out like getting out of that peeking into position I don't know how to, <laughs> what to call it while you're going in and I mean, specifically with this door, I mean, that's a sharp corner. You don't see anything here unless someone's at the door. I feel like with this door, with door three here, you could probably, like, have a mechanic where you can peek around. Now, say the animatronic's, like, right there and you peek around, probably, probably dead. But, you know. But, I mean, that's why there's a camera in there, so you can see in there as well if you uh, don't want to peek around. But, I mean, that's still, like, kind of nice. Like, you can kind of see what's going on with Bonnie. Like, if he's on his way, you have time to shut the door if you run out of power and can't use cams. And then you can also peek around door three if you run out of power and can't use cams. I mean, we could have... I mean, you, you would probably get a decent view here without, like, peeking around or something. So, I don't know. We probably don't need a peeking mechanic on that door, on door two, unless we want. I mean, your choice... I mean, there's like a 1% chance like a FNAF game creator, fan game creator sees this and decides to take me up on this, take up this idea of a game. But 
by the off chance that that does happen, you know, feel free to credit me. I mean, I'd prefer if you did, but you know, I mean, I'm not going to like see it and be like, hey, this is what I described. Oh, I'm going to get mad at you. I'm not going to be mad at you. It's just kind of like, oh, you know, you could have, you didn't, but eh, whatever. Because at the end of the day, it's not like, oh, you know, FNAF fan games, you can't really sell them for money. You know, Sco Scoot is going to get mad at you for that, which understandably so. And you would get like sued or something. Unless you take the game down. Now, going on a tangent. I mean, this whole video is me going on a tangent. But I'm going on a tangent while going on a tangent, which is not good. I mean, that kind of wraps it up. We talk stamina, doors, power. If you really wanted to, we could maybe have, like, vents, I guess. If you want something more power. Like, the normal doors, door 1, 2, and 3, that's all without power but if you want something more in the power system since there's not a whole lot there it's just lights for freddy cameras that the clock you know then you know that's that i mean that's not a ton but maybe you just don't give me a ton of power or something i don't know but if we want to we could add a whole another animatronic that just lives in the vents i don't know we could put like a vent in the corner or maybe just right here like this wall here just have a little vent towards the ground a little button boom or i guess there's a light switch here it's like boom flick that and you open and close the vent and it uses power one dude and like two vents or something just to check while you're running around put a camera in the vent or something i don't know i don't know exactly who would be running around here on like the night six and seven but i guess with night six we didn't really touch on that much did i night six dude i was like oh hey he could like show up in two spots and you gotta and there's a way to tell which is real, which is fake. You shut the door on the fake, you die. You shut the door on the real one, you're good to go. <coughs> but what about like a night seven, dude? Because we can't just have night six and only have one challenge, dude, right? We have to have at least one more. And of course, the night six guy who fakes you out could probably have other mechanics. Like one other mechanic, at least. I don't know. I haven't really thought this far ahead, obviously. Well, what about the night seven, dude? What could we do for that? Ooh, with the, the the second mechanic for the night six dude, the guy that fakes you out, right? His second mechanic could be like, oh, he does like a laugh or whatever. And that means he's in the basement or something. Or there's some kind of audio cue or whatever that they're in the basement. And you only have a certain amount of time to get down there and like shut the door, shine the light, whatever. Ooh, it would be kind of interesting if there's two different laughs. One meaning, hey, go to the door and just shut it. The other meaning, hey, go to the door and use your light. And if he's like, hey, this laugh means shut the door. Oh, you used your light, dead. Or hey, this means use your light, you shut the door, dead. You know, so kind of like, you know, that I think would be kind of interesting. So what about the other? What about the Night 7 dude? We need, I, I really don't have any ideas for Night 7 dude. What could Night 7 dude be? The Night 7 dude could just be like really fast and just going all over the place. The way the Night 7 dude could work is he goes to doors 1, 2, and 3. At, like, maybe door 1, you're supposed to just shut the door and you're good to go until he leaves. At door 2, maybe you have to, like, use the light or something. And then door 3, I don't know, you do some other thing. Like, Bonnie, you have to play tug of war with him. What would you do? Like, a random mechanic like that. Come something else, maybe? I don't know. I'm kind of at a loss of ideas for Night 7 dude. But then obviously after you beat the fifth night, you unlock night six on a separate like thing. Kind of like how the FNAF games do it. It's like, oh, here's, you can continue on night five or do night six or night seven is down here, like below it, whatever. I feel like that's a good way to do the menu. But also there should be like a extras or a custom night section. I think there should just be a section for custom night and you can do the main four and the two basement dudes on 1 to 20 difficulty, because, you know, that's what we do is 20, right? And I guess if you wanted to, you could probably do that on top of the Night 6 and 7 dude. And giving the Night 6 and 7 dude, like, any difficulty you want as well. So you could do, what, 8, 20 mode? I don't know how well Night 6 and 7 dude would work together. And then trying to put those two together with the other six, I don't know how well that would work. I guess it would be 920 if you have the one vent dude as well. 
who is like simple to deal with, but it's just another way to use power kind of a thing. That would be the whole point if you did it. You probably don't need to, but you could. I don't know. I mean, that's pretty much my idea. I mean, that's pretty much my idea, so I don't know. I mean, I've had, like, this just kind of, I just kind of randomly think of random things and then just think about it or talk aloud to myself about it. I promise I'm not crazy. But yeah, I've had this specific idea come to me a few times in the past however many years. I may look and sound like I'm older, but I'm not that old, trust me. But... I don't know. So I just figured I'd record this and talk about it. I mean, I think it'd be kind of cool if some dude, but it's a very low chance that this happens, but I think it'd be kind of cool if like some dude who likes to make FNAF fan games saw this and was like, oh, hey, that sounds like a cool idea. I'll make that. And I encourage anyone who's watching and knows how to make fan games or whatever, FNAF games, I encourage you to do it. I mean, like, you know, maybe put my YouTube channel somewhere in the credits or whatever, but I don't need nothing more than that. I mean, I'm not that hard to get in contact with. If you even want to, like, talk to me about ideas for it or whatever, go for it. I don't mind. But, yeah, I just figured I'd talk about this. I also have a, you know, while we're on this topic, let's talk about another idea I had. Now, it's very simplistic. I don't think this needs to be a whole game. Oh, you could do you could do this as like a mini game between nights. Oh my god, my brain is large. You could do this as like a mini game between nights. Cuz we have this hallway here, like this door would be shut, right? <laughs> Christ, that's loud. But like, you know, cuz you got this hallway here, and the way you could do it is you could have like a desk right here. It's kind of dark on the camera, it's a bit darker. Ooh, yeah. But the thing is, I have three switches right here. The way it would work is like, oh, hey, there's an animatronic around here. Or maybe even like in here. Oh, that would make more sense. Because then like, oh, hey, they're running around. They're trying to get at me, obviously. And they're at the end of the hall. Well, let me use this switch here. Boom. Hall light on. They're going to be like, oh, that's the light. I got to run away. And you only have a certain amount of power. So you can't just go like, oh, here, let me turn all the lights on and stuff, right? So you have a certain amount of power. And you got to survive like two minutes or something. I don't know. And if you survive... Then you skip like an hour or two or something of the next night. Kind of like a fun with plush trap thing, but more to it. But of course, if that guy gets a little closer, because maybe they get faster towards the end of the mini game section, this isn't going to stop them because now they're in this little spot here where it wouldn't be as bright, so they're not going to care. So you'd use light switch number two, which is this light right up here. Boom. Now it lights up that area, all of this area here. And there's this third light switch. It's really dim. Are you going to see this? Okay, you can see it. But we have a light out there. kind of shines in. But, like, this light would probably be a little brighter in the minigame. But it would get, like, this really close area. Which would work if the dude comes from this way. And is, like, right there. Or gets really close. is about to kill you. You quickly flick this light. The third light to get rid of him. And he'll go away. I feel like... I don't know how exactly it would work. Obviously, each switch that's on is going to take power. And you can have multiple on at a time. Maybe there's two dudes, one from this way, one from that way or something. I don't know. Or maybe the same guy, except he gets faster and can go between these areas here. I don't know how that make, would make sense. I guess in the game, you could be like, oh, hey, there's a vent by the stage or some shit. I don't, I don't know. But I feel like one of these switches should just be like... Oh, hey, this switch only uses a little bit of power when it's on. This one uses a medium amount of power when it's on, and this one takes a lot of power when it's on, or something like that. It doesn't have to be specifically that order, but I feel like that's how it should work. Would it make more sense for the further light? Since you're getting rid of them right away, would you want to use... Would it make sense to use more power for that or less? I don't know. Maybe to punish you for, like, letting them get so close, you use more power or something. And if you run out of power, you could either just die... Or, you know, you could just sit there and, you know, hope you get those last 10 seconds you need to beat the mini game, Kind of like how you do in FNAF 1 if you run out of power at the end on, like, 5 a.m. or something. But that'd be kind of a cool little mini game to have between nights for, like, oh, hey, let me save two hours. And don't just throw them in it. Explain to them maybe not necessarily how it works entirely, 
Maybe be like, hey, you have your, you know, use the lights to make them go away or something like that. Let them figure out the rest on their own. But still tell them before throwing them in the night, be like, or the mini game, be like, hey, you can either do this, and then if you do it successfully, you skip two hours, or you could just not do the mini game at all and just go to the next 9 or 12 a.m. or something like that. Give them a very brief explanation of be like, okay, so if you want to do it, this is how it works. Basically, there's going to be a, one or two dudes coming for you, and you got to use the lights to your right to get rid of them or something like that, you know? <coughs> I don't know. Something like that would be... Just keep it vague. Don't explain how, like, hey, this light is for when they're far. This light's for the medium distance, and this one's for close. Don't explain that, perhaps, so they can still learn. Because that's part of the fan games. That's part of what makes them fun is, like, hey, I got to learn some new mechanics that we don't normally see in FNAF. But, yeah, you're just stationary. You got your three lights to defend you. You only have so much power. I think that would be kind of cool. <laughs> I mean, I think that kind of wraps up this whole tangent. I mean, that's pretty much all I got to say. I mean, you know, again, it's a very low chance that, like, someone who can make FNAF fan games sees this and wants to do it. But, hey, if you do, that's cool. Uh, I would prefer if you put my YouTube, uh, you know, in the credits or something like that. And if you want to, I mean, I have a Discord... I mean, you probably have to come into, like, a YouTube or Twitch live stream and be like, hey, I need your Discord link, because I don't update that regularly, because I just forget to, I guess. But, you know, you could slide up in my uh, YouTube or Twitch chat or come in my Discord or whatever and be like, hey, I want to talk to you about the FNAF game or whatever. And I could, like, help you with ideas or how to do stuff. The thing is, I don't know how to, like, code or do any of that stuff, so... I would just strictly, you know, be there to be like, hey, this is how this should work. Or, hey, can you do this? It would be kind of cool if this was a mechanic or whatever. Or if you just want some more insight on stuff. I don't know. Something like that. That's pretty much all I got. Actually, at the end of the haul here. Oh, yeah, I should probably explain, like, <laughs> I almost forgot to explain, like, hey... Bonnie and Foxy are out there on their own stage. Where's Freddy and Chica? In there. There's just a stage in there with Freddy and Chica. Which would make more sense because then they have easier access to go anywhere. I, I feel like that would just work better. Since those two are going to be walking around to each of the doors. Versus Bonnie just coming to this door and Foxy only coming to whatever door, you know. Also, if you're like out here you know, trying to shine your light on Bonnie or whatever, and you have one of your doors shut for too long, and Foxy's like, hey, I'm mad at you. You're not allowed to do that. He's going to run right here to your doors, right? Well, he's going to run straight to you, and you're going to be in his kill box, and he'll kill you. So be careful of that as well. Um, I think that's it. I mean, obviously, we'd have a camera in there so you can see the stage with freddie and chica to see if they're there or not and they most I, I feel like it'd be a pretty good idea to have them when you like you know shut them out of a door they probably go back to there maybe not for long especially on night five maybe night five they wouldn't even go back maybe the later in the night the lower the chance they go back there instead of just running around in the halls or something i don't know but you know All right, I think that's about it. So yeah, uh, that's my that's my tangent. I probably won't edit this a ton. My friend's probably about to call me back. I told him to call me at five forty five. It's five forty seven. So <laughs> I guess I told him a pretty good time. So we're done. Oh, it's five forty three. Okay, these clocks are a little off. I don't know. A couple minutes before or after. I don't know. I mean, my iPad will tell me the exact time. 5.44, yeah. So, anyways, that's that's my idea. Again, you can, if you are someone who can make this a fan game, cool. If you want to, awesome. If you need more ideas or for me to elaborate on a specific mechanic for the game or something, or you want to be like, hey, I'm going to make this, because I think it'd be cool to make this. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And you're like, hey, 
how would I, how would, what would be a good way about going about this mechanic or whatever? And I'd be like, oh, uh, do it this way. I think that would work good if you were able to do that. You know, something like that. I don't know. Just get in contact with me. Just come into like a YouTube live stream, Twitch live stream, Discord. Leave a comment on the video, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, that's just my idea. I got nothing else to say. Bye. Oh, shit.